All right, let's talk about today's questions. Number one, how does Annabella feel in Act 4, Scene 1? How can you tell? This was today one of today's most popular questions. Maybe because it's the shortest question. Well, a short question. Let's take a look at Act 4, Scene 1. When groups were looking for evidence, they had a hard time. And it's because, to me, the strongest evidence for how Annabella feels is the lack of evidence. Act 4, Scene 1, this is page 445. A banquet. Uh, and in the previous scene, Saranzo and Annabella got married, so this is a wedding banquet. Well, no, not the previous scene, but here the friar says these holy rites performed. Holy rites is referring to the marriage ceremony. So right at the beginning of this scene, they have just gotten married, and this is a wedding banquet. Then we have this word. This word is no longer used in English. But we use a different word. You can say that it's the same word spelled differently. Today, the word we use is oboe. I think it's like a changguan mudi or something like that. It's a musical instrument. And in fact, this word is pronounced the same way. This word is also pronounced oboe. And this is because it's a French. It comes from the French. And French people pronounce their words in a very strange way. Uh, French people like to. Uh, like if there's two consonants in a row, right? T and B, they will ignore the first consonant. So it looks like hot boys, but it's actually oboe. Oboes, I should say. So people are playing music. Enter the friar, Giovanni, Annabella. So she's here. She's in the scene. Philotus, Saranzo, Donato, Florio, Richardetto, Patana, and Vasquez. And then later we will see Hippolyta. So basically everybody who's still alive is in this scene. Uh, so they just got married. They're beginning a banquet. Giovanni is also here. He says to himself, aside means he says to himself, oh, torture. Were the marriage yet undone? This is subjunctive. It means I wish that the marriage could be undone. Ear, which means before. Ear, I'd endure this sight. What sight? To see my love clipped by another. Here it means stolen by another. I would dare confusion. We talked about this two weeks ago. Confusion means go to hell. So I would dare even to go to hell and stand the horror of 10,000 deaths. So he would be willing to suffer anything to see the marriage reversed. Vesquez notices him. Are you not well, sir? Uh, and then Giovanni says, pretty fellow, wait. Pretty means please. Wait means serve. Uh, somebody who serves you at the restaurant is called a waiter. And that's where this word comes from, wait. Vesquez is Saranzo's servant. So Giovanni is basically saying, shut up, go do your job. Don't talk to me. I need not thy officious diligence. I don't need you to pretend to be polite and worry about me. Officious just means like proper, polite. Uh, Florio says, Senor Donado, come, you must forget your late mishaps and drown your cares in wine. Late means recent. Mishap means accident. Uh, even today, mishap means accident. Um, but today, late means something different. Today, late means dead. Your late teacher means your dead teacher. Uh, and drown your cares in wine. Cares means your worries, your anxieties. It still means the same thing today. 
So Florio, the father of the bride, is going around the wedding banquet toasting people. Uh, and one person he toasts is Donato. Donato, of course, is the uncle of Brighetto. Brighetto died uh, killed by Grimaldi. We saw that last week. That is what Florio is talking about. So we see that people are going around toasting each other. Soranzo, Vasquez, Vasquez, my lord, Soranzo, reach me that weighty bowl. So give me that bowl. They're, they don't drink wine with cups or like glasses today. They drink it with bowls. And it's an expensive bowl, weighty, made of some kind of metal. Here, brother Giovanni, here's to you. Your turn comes next, though now a bachelor. So he's saying, I know you will get married soon. He's he's blessing Giovanni. Here's to your sister's happiness and mine. And of course, this is exactly what Giovanni does not want to hear. So Giovanni says, I cannot drink. Saranzo, what? Giovanni, twill indeed offend me if you make me drink I will be offended. Annabella, pray do not urge him if he be not willing. Please do not force him if he is not willing to drink. So this is the first thing that Annabella says in this scene. And she has to say something because it looks like uh, Giovanni has offended Soranzo by not drinking. And of course, Giovanni himself is already very angry, so she's afraid that they might get into a fight. So she has to come out and keep the peace. Then the second thing that she says is, um, OK, so in this scene, uh, Hippolyta enters, right? Hippolyta and ladies, but they're wearing masks. So we don't know, or at least the characters don't know that this is Hippolyta. They think that these are just some dancers that will come and perform with the music, right? Music and dance, it says. Music and dance. So they perform. Saranzo says, thank you. Uh, and then Hippolyta removes her mask. Everybody shouts, oh, it's Hippolyta. <laughs> um, and then Hippolyta explains what she's here to do. She says, Previously, Saranzo and I had an affair and I was very angry, but now I forgive him. And to show my forgiveness, uh, right, to confirm it, reach me a cup of wine. And so Vesquez gives her a cup of wine and she's going to toast Saranzo. But Hippolyta has added poison to the cup of wine in front of Saranzo. So he, she's actually here to kill him. But she doesn't know that Vasquez is working for Saranzo. So in fact, Vasquez turned it around. And so the poison wine is in front of her and not in front of Saranzo. So she toasts him. They both drink. Hippolyta waits for Saranzo to die. Instead, she herself dies. And as she is dying here, I feel my minute coming. My time is here. I'm going to die. And then here, like before she dies, she curses him. Take my curse amongst you. And so she, like, she dies. She dies cursing Saranzo. Right? Uh, this is how people die. Oh, oh, dies. Florio, was er so vile a creature? Er means ever. Was there ever so evil a person? Richardetto, here's the end of lust and pride. End does not mean it's over. End means the consequence. Xia chang. So this is what happens to somebody full of lust and full of pride. Pride here means something like arrogance. Oh man. Right? Pride and prejudice. Oh, my opinion. And then Annabella says the third thing in this scene. It is a fearful sight. 
which means it's a terrible thing to see. So to go back to this question, in the entire scene, Annabella only says three things. One, she says something to prevent a fight. Two, she says something because everybody says, oh, it's Hippolyta. And three, she gives a moral conclusion to Hippolyta's death. So from this lack of evidence, how do you think Annabella feels? So uh, I talked to a few groups and they all agreed that Annabella probably feels guilty because she knows that she's pregnant and yet she married Saranzo without telling him. She also probably feels sad, you guys said, um, because uh, Giovanni still loves her, but she's married to somebody else. Um, a few possible other feelings. She could feel sad for herself. If you believe that she still loves Giovanni, then she would also be sad about marrying Saranzo. Uh, we talked about this last week. One of the questions was, does she still love Giovanni? So depending on your interpretation, she might feel sad about this also. She probably also feels a little scared. Right? Giovanni is here. He's walking around offending people, refusing toasts. She's kind of worried about what he might do, right? She has to come out and stop a fight. She probably also feels a little awkward, right? Her ex, I mean, if you want to think about it this way, her ex is here, her husband is here, nobody knows she's pregnant, her father is there. It's just all kind of awkward. So, like all of these emotions make her feel like she doesn't really have anything to say. She has, she's at one group said she is the only person who knows everything, but she can't say anything. Because if she says anything, it would all uh, be to her own disadvantage. Like she would suffer if she said anything. Yeah, so Annabella is not having a good time at her own wedding. We can talk more about this. Why does she feel like she has to say this? Well, at this moment in the play, Annabella is seen as or, or positioned as a clear victim. Her intentions were pure, out of love. But she gets pregnant. Giovanni doesn't really take care of her. She's forced to marry a man she doesn't love. The play puts her in the position of a victim. So she is currently at this moment the purest character, even though she slept with her brother. So it is most appropriate for Annabella to give the moral conclusion to Hippolyta's death. Richard Detto says this is what Hippolyta gets for her lust and her pride. And he can say this because he is Hippolyta's husband. He has the right to pass judgment on Hippolyta. But Annabella doesn't pass judgment. She gives a moral observation. She's not saying Hippolyta is good or bad. She's saying the whole situation is terrible. It's an observation. It's the kind of conclusion that ends this part of the, the plot or this part of the uh, Hippolyta story, we should say. Question two. Nobody took this question. I, I think it's a great question. I mean, I wrote it, but I think it's a great question. So after Hippolyta dies, most people say wonderful justice, but her husband says she died too soon. Which one do you agree with more and why? Let's look at this. Uh, so. Um, let's see that this is. Let's see, where is it? OK, here is where Vasquez says that he poisoned Hippolyta's wine, not Saranzo's. 
And then Hippolyta calls him a villain, a bad man. And then Vasquez explains why he did this. Hippolyta calls him a monster. Vasquez uh, explains how he did this. So this is where he says he works for Saranzo, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then after explaining all of this, everybody says, wonderful justice. So everybody agrees Vasquez did the right thing. Let's look at his explanation. Die in charity for shame. Charity here means um, a kind of Christian love of everybody. So, you know, according to Christianity, you should love your neighbor, you should love your enemy. That kind of love is called charity. It comes from the Latin caritas, which means that kind of love. And this is why we use the word charity for NGOs who help people. They don't help people because they're better people. They help people because they help everybody. So die in charity for shame. So uh, I hope you die having, uh, I hope you can confess your sins and die in the love of God uh, before you die. This thing of malice, this woman, so he calls her a thing. Malice means evil. Even today, malice means like evil intention. This woman had privately corrupted me with promise of marriage under this politic reconciliation. Uh, politic means calculated, designed. So it's saying that this is not a real reconciliation. It's a designed, it's, it looks like a reconciliation. To poison my Lord while she might laugh at his confusion on his marriage day. Again, confusion means dying and going to hell. I promised her fair, so I, I agreed to do this. But I knew what my reward should have been. So he's saying, I knew if I actually did it, I knew what would happen to me. And the idea is that he would have gone to hell. And would willingly have spared her life. So at that moment, he would have been willing to just walk away and not hurt Hippolyta. But that I was acquainted with the danger of her disposition. So through this uh, event, I learned, I became acquainted with, I learned how dangerous she was. Disposition means character. So I learned how dangerous a person she was. Now have fitted her a just payment in her own coin, and therefore I have given her an end that fits her character, a payment that fits her coin. So uh, uh, an ending that she deserves. There she is. So you can imagine at this point, he's like pointing at her. There she is. She hath yet and end thy days in peace, vile woman. Uh, she hath yet means she is still alive. She is still there. Hath is has. Uh, so and end thy days. So he, now he's talking to her. And end your days in peace, vile woman. As for life, there's no hope. Think not on it. Uh, think not on it just means don't hope for it. Your life is ending. There is no hope for you. So he, when he says end your life in peace. He doesn't mean I hope you are at peace inside. He means keep your peace. Don't talk. So die quietly. Uh, and everybody thinks that he did the right thing. Wonderful justice. And of course, Hippolyta does not shut up, right? She curses everybody. She curses Saranzo before she dies. Um, so here they think that Vasquez did the right thing. Then she curses everyone. Uh, and then act four, scene two. Richardetto is talking to Philotus. Remember, Philotus is also in this scene. 
right? She's also here, here. She also saw Hippolyta try to kill Soranzo and then die killing herself accidentally. But here, Richardetto says to Philotus, my wretched wife. Wretched means like a poor person going to hell did not save yourself. More wretched in her shame than in her wrongs to me. So he's saying that the fact that she cheated on him is not the worst part. The worst part is all the other stuff that she did. Right, so her wrongs to me is like cheating on me. My wretched wife hath paid too soon the forfeit of her modesty and life. Modesty is here like reputation. So she had paid paid the forfeit of means to pay the penalty for, which here means to take the consequence. Um, of so like she has paid out her life and her reputation. She has no more life. She has no more reputation. And he says that this is. Too soon. And then he continues to talk about Soranzo and what's going to happen to Soranzo. So going back to the question. At first, everyone thinks uh, Vasquez did a great thing. And but then Richard Detto says she died too soon. Which one do you agree with more and why? Well, this also depends on your understanding of Hippolyta. In the traditional Christian understanding, we should always give people a second chance. So in that case, Richard Detto is saying after Hippolyta learned the truth about Vasquez, learned that she would fail, we should have let her have a chance to repent and confess and to save her own soul. But when she learned the truth, it was already after she drank the poison. So in that sense, we could say that she died too soon. On the other hand, we saw that after she learned the truth, she still had time to say a paragraph, and that paragraph was full of anger and cursing. So it's not like she tried to ask for forgiveness. She didn't try to ask mercy from God. Uh, so maybe she, if we had given her a second chance, maybe she would not have taken that chance. But we don't know because at that moment she already knew she was going to die. So maybe she's thinking if I asked for mercy, what would that help me? I'm going to die anyway. But really the, the reason Richard Detto is saying this to Philotus is because Philotus is his niece. She's still a young woman. And so Richard Detto has a duty to raise her and educate her. So he's trying to be a good uncle and a good teacher. Um, and in fact, he says this, since things go thus, my niece, so since the situation looks like this, in tender love and pity of your youth, so because you are so young and I love you so much and I care for you, my counsel is, my advice is, that you should free your years from hazard of these woes. So escape from these dangers your years so meaning like uh you have so many years in front of you in your life save these this future from these dangers how by flying hence to fair cremona fly means flee to escape run away hence means from here to fair Cremona, there to vow your soul in holiness, a holy votaress. So he's telling her, go become a nun, shonu. And like leave the world uh, and devote all the rest of your life to worshiping God. 
so like you can see the reason that he's saying good things about Hippolyta and everything else is he's trying to encourage his niece uh, to think on the bright side and to save her own soul. So maybe it's not what he really believes. Uh, leave me to see the end of these extremes. So let me face the danger alone. All human worldly courses are uneven. No life is blessed but the way to heaven. Only worshiping God is a blessed life. And Philotus says, Uncle, shall I resolve to be a nun? Uh, Richard Dato, I, gentle niece, and in your hourly prayers, remember me, your poor, unhappy uncle. Philotus, then farewell, world and worldly thoughts. Adieu. Adieu means goodbye in German. Welcome, chaste vows. Myself, I yield to you. Chaste means uh, pure of sexuality. So because, you know, nuns can't have sex. So she's saying, uh, welcome my future as a nun. I will give myself to you. And she leaves. Uh, they both leave. And that's the last we see of Philotus. Question three. The stage directions say, enter Giovanni with a heart upon his dagger. How would you perform this? Let's see, five, six, ten. Five, six. There we go. OK, so five, six is another banquet, and this is the trap that Saranzo has set for Giovanni. He learns by torturing Putana. He learns by asking Vasquez to torture Putana that Annabella's child is from Giovanni. So he sets a trap to, to kill Giovanni. He, well, he invites Giovanni to his house to have a banquet. Uh, and who else is here? Cardinal, Florio, <laughs> Giovanni's father is here. Donato, Sorenzo, Richard Detto, Vasquez, and other people. OK, so he set the trap. Where's my brother Giovanni? And then enter Giovanni with a heart upon his dagger. Here, here, Sorenzo, trimmed in reeking blood. Trimmed means decorated, like uh, covered in. Reeking means stinky. Trimmed in reeking blood that triumphs over death. Blood that wins over death. So he's saying that uh, Annabella's death is not an, a regular death. It's like a holy death or, or a sacred death or whatever. Proud in the spoil of love and vengeance. Spoil means uh, treasure the thing that you win or like a prize so he's saying he's proud that he has won the prize of love and vengeance which is annabella's heart uh, and then he continues but the question is how would you have giovanni enter uh one group took this question do you have some thoughts about this from this side Ah, OK, so uh, presumably he's right handed, right? So he would hold it like this. And then he would enter the stage from from the left. Could be. Um, so in this case, maybe the table is on the other side and they're sitting uh, behind the table. We don't want to. OK, if the table is directly facing the side of the stage, then the audience cannot see the people in the back. But if the pay table is facing directly toward the audience, then it doesn't make sense when Giovanni enters. So maybe the table is kind of like slanted, diagonal. We're supposed to think that they're facing the side, but we can still see the actors, something like that. It's a it's a trick that that uh, stage performances often use. 
So they're over there having dinner, chatting, and then Giovanni bursts, like maybe runs in, and he holds like his dagger, and on his dagger is, is what? How would you create a bloody heart? Traditionally, they would take a pig's heart and dip it in pig's blood, add a bit of red dye, like a sasu, uh, just before sticking it and then pushing Giovanni onto the stage and he would perform like that. So it's not just a heart, it's a bloody dripping heart, dripping blood. Very dramatic. Uh, and you can also imagine he'd probably, when he says his lines, he's probably very loud. Right, so the previous two lines, the cardinal, and we, your friend, Saranzo. But where's my brother Giovanni? Giovanni, here, here, Saranzo, trimmed in reeking blood, the triumphs over death, proud in the spoil of love and vengeance. Something like that. Something that really grabs everybody's attention. And you can even imagine like the, the other characters would be, would like pretend to be shocked or something like that. Um, so that's one possible way to do this. Another possible way is you could have Giovanni enter from the middle. So the table would be in the center of the stage and everybody would be sitting behind the table like uh, Jesus Christ in the Last Supper, right? But the middle of the, of the table would be empty so that we can see Giovanni enter. The audience probably already knows the story, but the first audience that doesn't know the story, when they see the empty center of the table, they will know something strange is going to happen. And then Giovanni like bursts through the, if you look at the stage, behind the stage there are usually three doors. So Giovanni bursts through the center doors, holding the bloody pig's heart, waving it around, getting everybody bloody as he like goes crazy on stage. And then you can have the like everybody like fall back left and right, and then like uh, talk with him. It also is a very dramatic way of doing this. That is in the 17th century. If you do this today, I think the best way to do this is have Giovanni enter from the audience. Like everybody is sitting behind the table in on stage, they're talking, and then just as Sorrento says, where's my brother Giovanni? Everybody looks around, it's quiet, nobody talks. And then from the back center entrance, uh, Giovanni kicks in the doors and holds up the blade um, with the pig's blood, uh, pig's heart on top. Uh, and he shouts his lines. Of course, he's wearing a microphone, but he shouts his lines as he runs through the audience to, to jump on stage. And in that case, you can not only shock the characters, you can also shock the audience. Uh, especially today, if a modern audience goes to see this play. They know the story. Like the tickets are very expensive. Once they buy the ticket, they're going to go and look up the story. So like this is a very key scene that it can be done in many different ways. The point is to have that shock and the contrast uh, between the quiet, peaceful dinner full of tension because it's a trap versus Giovanni going crazy, holding up this heart, waving it around. Number four, who do you think loved Annabella best? Why? A, few, a couple of groups took this question. Uh, two groups thought the answer is nobody. Like nobody really loves Annabella very well. Like uh, Giovanni loves her, gets her pregnant abandons her. He basically says, stay tight, don't go away, I will be back, and then he doesn't come back. And then at the end kills her. Because uh, if she cannot be his wife, she cannot be anybody's wife. So he's like a 
like a jealous, scary lover, right? Kombuchingen. Not as somebody who loves Annabella well. He loves Annabella strongly, but not in a way that's good for Annabella. Soranzo seems okay, but then when he discovers that Annabella is pregnant, all he cares about is finding the father of this bastard baby. Bastard means born out of marriage. bastard. Uh, and he, you know, he interrogates and tortures Annabella, doesn't get the answer. So he asks his servant Vasquez to torture Putana, uh, Annabella's closest uh, friend and supporter, and kills her after getting the information. And then plans revenge against Giovanni. All the while, he doesn't care about Annabella. He locks Annabella in her room. So... We can understand that he's angry, uh, but it does seem like he cares more about the child and his own reputation and Annabella, not as much. Who else do we have? Florio, Annabella's father. Uh, he wants what he thinks is best for Annabella, but he promises to give Annabella to Soranzo without asking her first. So even though Annabella doesn't like Soranzo and rejects him, uh, Florio, before letting Soranzo talk with Annabella, Florio already says, don't worry, I have already promised you, you don't have to worry about any other man. So he tries to be a good father, but maybe it's also not a good way to show his love for Annabella. Who else do we have? Grimaldi gets killed, or sorry, kills somebody and then runs away and doesn't even kill the right person. And then finally we have Vergetto. So one group said that their answer is Vergetto the fool. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. At first he tries to pursue Annabella, then he falls in love with Philotus, and he goes to tell Annabella that I am no longer going to pursue you because I'm going to marry Philotus. So he's innocent and honest. He doesn't technically love Annabella anymore, but he doesn't hurt her either. So uh, by process of elimination, Sanchufa, the answer probably is Brigetto. But really, this question makes us see that in this play, there are no good options for Annabella. The only person who is worthy of her love is her own brother. Saranzo is uh, a very average mid person uh, who cares too much about his fame. Uh, Grimaldi is a murderer. Brigetto is an idiot. Her father also cares more about their family reputation. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> um, so this really points out the irony of this play. Right? It's called "Tis Pity She's a Whore," and it's because the last line of the play, the cardinal says, after everybody has died, he says, "Who could not say 'Tis pity she's a whore'?" So the very last moral judgment comes from the cardinal calling her a woman of loose morals, a woman who sleeps with people she should not sleep with. Um, but really, we see in this play she doesn't have a good option. She must marry because of her age, but she has no good choice. So really, what? where is the problem? Is she the problem or is her society the problem? And question six, can you explain what everything happens? OK, nobody took this question, so here we go. Giovanni falls in love with his sister Annabella, asks the friar for advice. The friar says, don't do it. He doesn't listen. He, con he pursues Annabella, confesses his love. Annabella reciprocates. They fall in love, get married secretly, have sex. She gets pregnant. At the same time, uh, Soranzo is pursuing Annabella, 
but Annabella is in love with Giovanni, so she rejects him. But she says, if I marry anybody, it will be you. Uh, at the same time, Grimaldi is pursuing Annabella, uh, but she also doesn't love him. And at the same time, Burghetto, the fool, is also pursuing Annabella with the help of his servant, Poggio, and his uncle, Donato. Of course, Annabella doesn't love him either, but uh, Burghetto gets into a fight with somebody, and as he is being cured by the doctor, Richard Detto, uh, he meets Richard Detto's niece, Philotis, and they fall in love. Grimaldi sees that his main rival is Soranzo, so he decides to kill Soranzo, and he gets poison from the doctor, Richard Detto. He poisons his blade, and he, in the dark of night, he kills somebody, but only later realizes he has not killed Soranzo, he has killed Berghetto. So he runs away to the Cardinal, the Cardinal protects him, everybody thinks it's a terrible idea. Uh, Grimaldi leaves the play alive. <laughs> Very fortunate guy. Um, so Richard Detto is pretending to be a doctor, actually. In fact, he is the husband of Hippolyta, and he's trying to find out the truth of whether Hippolyta has cheated on him. Uh, Hippolyta did cheat on him. She cheated on him with Soranzo, but now Soranzo won't return her phone calls. Uh, and so she's trying to take revenge on Soranzo. So she meets Vasquez and promises that if Vasquez helps her kill Soranzo, she will marry him and give him all of her uh, riches and wealth and position. Vesquez pretends to agree, then he tells Soranzo, and they make a counter plan. Um, so back in the first part of the play, Annabella is now pregnant. The friar convinces her to marry Soranzo. They marry. Soranzo discovers that she's pregnant. He asks her who the father is. She doesn't say. So he gets Vesquez to ask Putana, uh, Annabella's uh, tutress, governess, supporter, who knows the answer, uh, who the father is. Vesquez goes to torture Putana. Putana tells him it's Giovanni. Vesquez kills Putana. Uh, then he goes back and tells Saranza, oh, it's Giovanni. And so Saranza says, okay, great. We're going to kill Giovanni. Um, so Vesquez is helping Saranza kill Giovanni. It's also pretending to help Hippolyta kill Saranza, but actually going to kill Hippolyta. So, um, at the wedding, Hippolyta shows up, tries to poison Saranzo, is betrayed by Vasquez to killing herself, curses Saranzo before she dies. Um, end of that scene, Giovanni uh, decides instead of like taking Annabella away, decides to take revenge on Annabella for marrying another man, sneaks into Saranzo's house, finds Annabella locked up in her bedroom, has like a face-to-face telling her why I'm going to kill you. Annabella says, I'm sorry. Uh, Giovanni stabs her in the heart, takes his, uh, the heart on his knife, uh, on his dagger, and then enters the party slash trap that Saranzo has set for Giovanni. He was going to kill Giovanni at that party. Instead, Giovanni comes in, says, ha ha, I killed Annabella. Everybody is shocked. Uh, everybody kills everybody else. Let's see if I remember. Ves uh, so Vasquez kills Giovanni. Actually, we can we can look at this. Uh, right. So they had planned to kill Giovanni at this party, right? Let's see. Blah blah blah. Uh, I have killed Annabella. This is her heart. Vasquez, and he is able to confirm. Giovanni's story, like he went to see Annabella, found that Annabella is dead. Florio dies of a broken heart. Uh, so uh, Giovanni says, this is what I did. Vasquez enters. He asks Vasquez, is it true or no, sir? Vasquez, tis most strangely true. Strange here means like weird. Unusual, unexpected. Florio, cursed man, have I lived to... Dies. So he dies of a broken heart. Uh, and then Vasquez... Uh, where is it? 
Soranzo uh, gets in and Giovanni tries to take revenge on Soranzo, stabs Soranzo, doesn't kill him. Vasquez, Soranzo's servant, takes revenge for Soranzo. He fights Giovanni. Uh, he doesn't win. So he calls out the key word, vengeance. And then uh, all of the assassins that they had hired enter and fight Giovanni. Uh, and Giovanni loses, right? Oh, I can stand no longer. So he loses the fight. Vesquez tells the assassins to run away, right? Away, away, and they run away. Uh, and then Saranzo uh, says, at least I managed to uh, stab. I, at least I, I finally managed to kill Giovanni before I die. And then Saranzo dies because Giovanni had stabbed him. Uh, and then Giovanni gets to say a few things more before he also dies. So who's left? Cardinal Donado, uh, Bergetto's uncle, Vasquez, Saranzo's servant, and Richardetto. So we have four people left in the play. We have two other people, uh, three other people who got away alive, right? Grimaldi, um, Philotus, and Poggio also got away alive. So out of how many people did we start with? Let's see, one, two, uh, the friar is also alive. So that's uh, four and four, that's eight people left. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Half of everybody died. And of the remaining eight, half of them left the play. Now, in a tragedy or in, like in, in a tragedy from the 16th and 17th centuries, the final lines will be said by the highest ranking person, the king, the duke, in this case, the cardinal. And usually this person will give the moral conclusion of the play. But in this case, we know that the cardinal is not seen as a good person. So he gives a conclusion, but it's a conclusion that we're not supposed to 100% agree with. He says, we shall have time to talk at large of all. So we'll talk about the details later. But never yet incest and murder have so strangely met. I, we've never seen a situation with incest and murder quite like this. Of one so young, so rich in nature's store. He's talking about Annabella. Full of promise, full of health. Nature's store means healthy. Who could not say, tis pity she's a whore. So his conclusion is it's all Annabella's fault. Uh, and we're not supposed to agree with this. We're supposed to say, oh, you're right. The Cardinal is a bad guy. Um, I previously said that the rhymes, uh, the, the, the poetry has some meaning for the actors, but in this, at the ending, it also has a meaning for the audience. At the end of each act and at the end of the play, there will be a couplet two lines that rhyme or at the very end of the play you have two couplets four lines that rhyme so to talk at large of all but never yet incest and murder have so strangely met one rhyme of one so young so rich in nature's store who could not say tis pity she's a whore two rhymes and that tells us it is the end of the play OK, I have 30 seconds left. Do you have questions? Great, so next week I will introduce the next unit, Paradise Lost, and I will bring a brand new handout. The midterm exam will cover both texts. See you next week.